Hello everyone and welcome to the Sloss match or the show match or the Sloss showdown as uh, others said it. It is some random person versus Pijero uh, in anticipation of Roulette Rivals 8 and I'm very happy to cast one of these uh, show matches again and I'm just as happy to have the same Conquester and Admin here. Welcome GK Punk. Hey! I just realized, yeah, this is... is it, are we the duo with the most amount of show ca show matches casted now? <laughs> we, we took the lead with two, yeah? <laughs> nice. I think it was Chris and Ducker last time and now the two slots, uh, Randy and PG. Uh, very exciting players, very high level veterans, so very curious to see how they will perform. We have got, of course, six maps. Uh, once again, it is play all six maps. And we've got Santa Fortuna first, then New York, Vitoton Creek, Dartmoor, Chongqing, and Mumbai. Yeah, and we'll be playing on the newly released Roulette Rivals 8 rule set and changes, so expect to see potentially battle axes, and you'll definitely see extra conditions in New York and Dartmoor. Yeah, we've had a well, peaking, I think that was issue last time around. Uh, we've had a chat with the players about uh, well, the match just in general, but they didn't say anything about uh, what conditions they want or don't want. So it is going to be just, uh, yeah, the regular one, but the new one as well. And we've got uh, lots of exciting changes to, to see, especially Dartmoor and New York later down the line with these uh, uh, secondary objectives. But first, uh, in a couple of seconds, a plain old but exciting Santa Fortuna. What have we got here, Punky? We have Screwdriver as the Street Soldier for Rico, Injected Poison with Coca Field Worker as uh, as Coca Field Worker for Andrea, but there's a suit kill present for Jorge Franco, but he needs to be eliminated with a kitchen knife. Kind of a forced start here. Yeah, uh, Santa Fortuna has lots of great starts, and that is probably halved with the suit requirement, but still, you can. Start around the Shaman area, which wouldn't be necessary this time around with these disguises. Uh, can have the main start or the bar start, and but nothing really. None of the disguises or kill methods would require you any of these. I think the Andrea kill early on would be more difficult here with the injected poison. That would be probably a second cycle ish kill. Yeah, second cycle, or if they want to like. Run straight for a co uh, coca field. Actually, I, th I thought construction worker, but yeah, it's going to the coca field and back. It's, you can't make the first cycle even in the meeting room, which is like around two and a half minutes. So that remains an early Jorge or an early Rico, but I don't think you can kind of rush Jorge with the necessary items. So that kind of leaves us with, with Rico, Street Soldier, Screwdriver. I don't think we'll see a really quick kill, but I guess we can see three of them nicely uh, chained together and with the first three starts getting caught uh, with the kitchen knife. A random getting spotted by the kitchen knife that's outside. There's a chef there too, which is convenient if you need a kill on Andrea with the chef. Oh, wait. Did you hit the lure on the? Uh, is that a yeah mansion guard, which I guess gives him the access and potentially other items. I'm curious where he will go with it. Uh, definitely will allow him to pick up the kitchen knife without being questioned. Yeah, and we could see already that uh, it was a slight little of challenge to the suit start and getting a. Uh, that agency pick up. I think we're going to see a lot of dart guns here because, yeah, uh, Seeker, Calmer, and Silence Pistol all for PG. Uh, that's probably the, the the meta loadout here. Just uh, every one of them is sort of necessary in their own way. Yeah, it's uh, the Seeker is almost a must if the loadout allows it for Jorge. It just makes things so much easier. PG takes a shot with the Krugermeyer from the window too, so nice shot there. Crouch is luckily as well and doesn't get spotted there and both of them at 1 minute 20 seconds as we speak. 
just with the one difference for Randy as uh, his distraction turned into a bullet impact and the mansion guard is in a slight bit of search. He wants to get the disguise later on or just probably sneak by. Speech also wants to sneak by this uh, <laughs> very annoying oh, yeah, enforcer. Peeper. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't you don't expect him there because literally almost every disguise he doesn't care about but the soldiers with a with a mask on he enforces. Which I always found it funny how masked disguises still have enforcers. <laughs> yeah. So PG has Stitch Soldier, but also Randy with the potential isolation over here. PG stream kind of froze for a little bit. I thought his game was about to crash because that's what usually happens when my game crashes. That's uh, very worrisome, especially for the admin, which uh, yeah, which you are. Or of course we are looking it together, but you will be making the necessary post. Which and uh, really thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. There's a. Uh, I do not think there is a crash rule. I think I don't think we're even doing photo finish. That's uh, kind of difficult to calculate milliseconds with uh, text posts. <laughs> do not have access to the done button yeah i asked them about uh, <laughs> that we don't want photo finishes and then i guess we didn't quite get the response for that but then i realized that we don't have the capability for that and with a uh, bush lore turning too close and uh, getting spotted in the hostel area in the suit so we'll have to restart and forfeit his three minute run yeah he's got orange from all half the coca field npcs almost instantaneously uh he's also playing with no smuggled items it's an empty smuggled slot for him kind of interesting he's switched up to start in the shaman's hut which makes him get to jorge like barely if you kind of have perfect movement but then you you still need the kitchen knives. yeah i like the shaman start for jorge's suit but that would be the agency pickup kills. You would still need to get a kitchen knife. So it could be a back and forth, but still a potential for an early isolation and then a uh, route for the disguise. Randy with the body shot, and we'll be getting through the uh, hostile area a bit easier. Yeah, definitely going to make it easier. Uh, he'll still get spotted by the coca field worker. Manages to hide away from him, though. Yeah, there's Jorge in his hut, but he's almost on his way out now. Yeah, I think, I think as you said very well, it, it, it has to be almost perfect. Not frame perfect, but very close to uh, accurate. Uh, for a, a last second peekaboo on Jorge, I'm not sure if there's any uh, random element in there to hopefully... Well, it's He's Jorge, so there definitely is some random element yeah. there. <laughs> He's trying to do a peekaboo inside of the, the the coke production room with the machine. Oh, he takes a shot, and he shot near the target like Jorge is going to be an instant lockdown. He's also compromised now. Seems to be only Jorge for the time being, as I don't see any oranges. And I guess we will see the end of the run when someone else turns orange. I guess this means that the run is still alive or though very hard to salvage yeah he's got yeah there's orange right now oh he made his way to the hippos enclosure in the meantime five minutes in no kills but he's still in his suit he has a kitchen knife which he's about to throw yeah replant from random Peach is looking for for this isolation Two NPCs just one too many for this area. Wait a second, is he complaining about the knife? The hippo? I, th I thought he was throwing his knife. I think so too, and I've heard others say that with illegal items, uh, illegal melee items, if the oh. civilian sees it's thrown... That yes, that's seen, correct. Yeah, if the civilian sees it's thrown, yeah. it is still the the um, the call-in uh, mechanic. 
So restart for both now. Pidgeyero saw a little bit of suspicion meter from the two guards in the cave behind him, and that would have been spotted very soon afterwards. Yeah, we are back at the beginning, both of them having a promising early run, but this is going to be a longer, longer spin with uh, around seven to nine minutes. So uh, not quite there yet. They have to, I guess, rethink the approach or just to be a bit more careful with their uh, middling strategies. Yeah, Random's restart wasn't as costly. Pijero was six minutes into his run. He also doesn't have anything to open the store now. Another replan. Oh, it's unfortunate because there is a crowbar uh, next to the toilet. The yeah, he must have slipped his mind because that's uh, it's a heavy loss in terms of forfeiting the dart gun away. Dart dart guns are like kind of like having the old electrocution phone where it's like your best friend. You use it. In yeah, a way it's way better than that. It's very dependent on emetics for at least one target, but it could be made quicker for the, for other ones. But and oh. we'll have to restart again. It's uh, it's tempting really to to approach Jorge in the suit from the Shaman start, but it's it's really tight. And I guess the very best case scenario is if, if you can get him inside with the last second peekaboo. But once he's out there, it's not a lot that you can do. Yeah, and then once again another replan from random decided to go back to the default start. Pijero though made his way to the coca field now. About a minute in. Gonna oh so close. Very much so that he was almost spotted. Full, yeah. yeah. Did they change the detection threshold for that? <laughs> I've been seeing so many almost like that looks like a hundred percent full. Yeah. I guess they did get away with this one. Yeah, I think it was it you who mentioned whoever it was what it says like the detection is like a hundred and one percent and not a hundred percent. It was me. I, I do feel like sometimes that uh, you can get the full one, you can even get the trespassing yeah. with the green guns, but there is just a very slight leeway there. That might be the case from our players completely, you know, breaking the suspicion meter like normally you would think it's just a binary thing but it might not be yeah and that's why i really like the the yellow uh it's not a, it's not, not the new overlay or not the new ui because it was uh, halfway into it went two i feel like when it was introduced that it's more gradual increase and you can kind of anticipate it a bit more but Sometimes you just get just lucky. I think this is straight the case for PG and in the players in general, but they're really close so far and mostly green guns, luckily. Yeah, and he's managed to isolate Jorge in the in a toilet. Now slowly walking past the two coca field worker. Random's made his way to the coca field as well. After all this, it's maybe not as surprising that they opted the suit, suit kill first. Uh, it is the hardest target in the hostile area and they don't have the item, but looks like they will be approaching it in uh, two parts. And I think PG will be the first one to reach the mansion area, a mansion guard disguise, and then get a, a kitchen knife there. And uh, we'd expect Randy to do something similar, although he is a coca field worker at this point in time. Yeah, ra random might be a, l a lot un more unpredictable. Pajero might go for like the standard stuff and what you would expect target wise. I mean, random could just turn around and start going for Andrea right now because he is a very improv favorite player and it's really, really fun to see at times. Yeah, I'm curious. And now he is going. Uh... <laughs> he is leaving. Yeah, area. he's going away. Yeah, at, at, see, he, he might just go for Andrea now. <laughs> if he was slightly faster, he who knows, he maybe. I don't know, it's a long walk all the way to the other side of the village. 
Randy meeting up with the Coca Field guards and perhaps not understanding it for a second. I needed a couple of seconds as well because he started the run with a body shot in the suit, so they had to run up there and they were just uh, casually walking back down a minute and a half later. Yeah, I th I think this this actually gives some second thoughts for Random uh, that he would like to catch Andrea first cycle, but he cannot this run. But he sees the street soldiers and he perhaps gets a screwdriver for the agency pickup. PG for sure did Randy. I'm not sure, but uh, you could. And then with that two three minute timing, a downstairs bathroom would be very viable for Rico. Yeah, that's uh, so he yeah he has a screwdriver in his inventory. Oh. Went for a shot that looked like a bullet impact. I think Randy really embracing yeah. the, the, the show match uh, aspect and <laughs> tries to finish these spins with the most amount of body shots as possible. Oh, he still oh. gets caught by the other camera. There are two overlooking the same gate. And then eventually. Yeah, there's the one on the inside on that shed building that's has the two mansion guards, but it, the, yeah, I guess that camera spotted him trespassing. Man, it's difficult because they Randy was really trying to to go back and forth and with these uh, unique smart ideas, but it's just one more obstacle all the time. But now, if he takes care of the both of the cameras. Or just approaches the disguise a tiny bit quicker than then he can really get that first kill in just about two and a half minutes. Yeah, Pijiro made good time to get to Rico with the hippo isolation. He set everything up, got the two NPCs knocked out, and he's got the kitchen knife from there as well, back at the coca field for his Jorge kill. That's a long toss, that's a far away. Gets it. No question marks. It's a crucial part, or the one I would be most scared about. If if it somehow hits the side of Jorge's head, then the Cockfield workers will hear it and investigate it. Wasn't the case, luckily. It's also a problem with the, the Andrea kills, but luckily won't be this time because she's injected poison. Tiny bit stuck here. But of course, the guard on the right won't turn away, and the, the Cockfield worker lady. Uh, carried on with her cycle, and I guess Pidgey just wanted to be safe with the camera. Pidgey needs uh, his Coco Field worker. I imagine he wants to take that out of here. But Rico is also almost at the hippo's enclosure, and he's kind of on a timer. Yeah, not a lot of time oh. remaining. And now Bad the timing. Coco Field guards are. Uh, yeah, gatekeeping. Perhaps now, but I'm sure PG has to be looking out for the street soldier disguise uh, more than anything. Now, if this guard is any problem, I never knew. Luckily not. Of course, it's one of the personal bodyguards of Jorge, who just uh, ends up there without any movement as <laughs> Randy is in quite a situation and gets hunted, unfortunately. Thought for a second he's just gonna, but the head movement away from him was too tempting to not try, but unfortunately he was too late because once they look away, that means the next thing they do is look at you. Indeed. Said the one consistent part of their inconsistent or. Yeah, absolutely. Cycle, yeah. It's, uh, the uh, head movement is the left and the right, respectively. Oh man, Pidgey is working that suspicion meter. He's it's gone almost full multiple times so far. But that really sounded like it's it, it went full, so I just don't understand anymore. But uh, I, Pidgey, yeah, Pidgey's patch has been perfect so far. As Randy uh, with the body shot uh, didn't get far away from. The oh, the, oh my, jeez, hot again. The luggage is saving wow. for now. Oh, dances around the luggage and the guard. <laughs> okay, Pijero. Yeah, it was, yeah, well, and he's happy about it. Gets this luck during RR8. It, I don't know. <laughs> I might be looking at a champion here. 
That's unbelievable, just in one map. Rico almost on his way back, still decent enough timing. Very last second, but I suppose that it's still doable if he finds an angle which only Rico hears and he gets the question mark, but not the guard. I was going to say either of the guards, but one has already left or just not a factor and Rico is not going for the out of bounds area. I think the, the throw was intended at a very weird angle, but at least that got to stop Rico for a second. And the second throw will be investigated by Rico still. That's quite fortunate for him. Oh, it's supposed for a close combat instead of a throw. This, come on, Pidgey, this is not roulette freestyle. It wasn't forced melee, but he'll <laughs> get the kill, drag the body away. But the guards will investigate that close combat. Risky. But again, Pidgey's luck has turned up to 11, so he'll probably get away with most things. I guess we could learn if there is a dump prompt there to get rid of the body. I don't think it will be found there anyway, but I guess he won't be hiding that. And I, I think it's just... I think he did everything he could here and we'll just... Uh, Go for that last kill back to the Koka field for the worker disguise and well it seems like a third cycle but I don't think he will mind it at all. As long as he's close to a finish. And bullet distraction will be <laughs> a last tiny bit of suspicion meter for him in dimension area and yeah, PG did get away with a lot with, around the Trico kill. Yeah, gets away clean, gets back to the Coca field. One more disguise. He won't be trespassing once he gets it, so that'll be good news for the suspicion meter. Random has a kitchen knife now. He's made Jorge sick. He used both of his darts, so... If both of them hit, he should have a good amount of time. Just needs his suit back. So it's uh, two full minutes from the start of the act. And I think he has some good time. But he also has Pidgeist. to hurry. Pidgey's bullets not being hurt by the Cocofield he wants. Cocofield worker he wants. That's going to be tough. He's approaching closer. He's going to see him throw that. Yep. He might still go for that. They like doing that. Yeah, I think he will. It just takes a couple extra seconds. But Peach is worried about the guard as well. Even if it's a peekaboo, but it won't be. He just wants to get this disguise and the guard was in position facing away from the worker. So that's the last Yeah, because that wasn't, that wasn't tall grass. So uh, as a dude there, if the guard was looking, it would have been instantly spotted. But Random makes his first kill, that gets a side, hits him right in the side of the head, though that will be hurt by one of the guards, and gets KO'd, who <laughs> also gets hit in the side of the head, gets hurt by the other guard. That, but that other guard funny. went from, oh boy, so it's oh. over, but it was such yeah, a it's... weird sequence of events, because it was the loud side KO turning into the... Uh, the the shallow bushler turning into the uh, the tall bushler so it was like they did three rotations around each other until uh, he went for that last body and unfortunately ripping his run i guess most the luck on the right hand side for this first map but pg still needs to finish this job Because yeah, long walk, like I said, back all the way to the other side of the village, and then hoping that Andreas' cycle is good. Random gets an unintended action, actually gets spotted with combat. Too close to take that body shot from. Mm -hmm. Now, the great guessing game, I think Andrea just started in the meeting room, which would be really, really close for PG if he can get there in time or he has to wait a full cycle until the peekaboo um, because there's no proxy conversation to trigger this might be as short as 20 seconds and 
Oh boy, I guess we see in a couple of seconds. Here. And it is a live kill, so you have to take good control of her. It's just not something you can just quickly punch her and keep her. Oh, he gets a peekaboo. That might work for him. Another <laughs> suspicion meter moment. Maybe wow. we should change that bar's name to Pijero Bar. And and the yeah, complicated thing is too. that he wanted to use the seeker there to get her in the bathroom and now Fiji is looking for a, a quicker the, kill but there will be a guard a problem, following though. her. Exactly. There will be guards following her uh, and oh and the gun flash on that guard. So that's the lost cause for making him sick. And that's probably oh, me makes sure that Andrea shouldn't be sick or shouldn't be made sick anymore because that will be turning into a target lockdown. I guess that's the best case scenario to delay her by throwing more distractions there so that she doesn't see the panic. Well, he's managed to do it. Guard turned away and went... Oh, but he's coming back in. He has to go inside the compound and then out the window. The longest animation, but you don't have to be near her, luckily. That's the end of the third kill, and we'll be causing yeah, more he panic. Go up and over. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he can go down the stairs, which won't be seen. Oh, we turn into a psychic lockdown. Hopefully, oh, the nice. assistant won't be going to the balcony, but otherwise, he should be good to go. But where will that guard be below the stairs? Wow. What is happening here? <laughs> Another Randy restart, sorry for missing that, but now I think it's all about Fiji if he can get to leave this area, shut the last camera so that he won't have to deal with the cameras and now he's in the clear with Coca Field Worker, he won't have any more uh, enforcers. What a crazy 15 minute run by Fiji. Yeah, it was one of the most unusual Santa Fortuna and P PG working that suspicion meter. He almost sat on the bench. You almost did it. <laughs> I was considering it. But there's the finish and there will be the first two points. Of course, it's play all six maps. It doesn't really matter who wins or not, but important or nice to keep track. And PG will be the early leader with two points. Five stars, the symmetrical 15 minutes, 15 seconds. Pajero will get out of the first uh, first map. Hopefully with uh, still something left in his tank. That was, <laughs> that was a hectic one. Yeah, that's, for others it's the luck spent for the whole May. Hopefully it's uh, not going away anything from the, uh, the tournament luck. But very nice run to start with. And after the early couple of restarts, he was the one who put it together with a lot of close calls, but eventually a decent route. A nice first win. New York will be the second map and already we will see a, a quite big change from previous events, as we will see the Athena Savala skill, but also a restriction on uh, how to get the data, data core or case files, data core or data disks, I'm sorry, just too much in the Dartmoor mood, but also there will be a uh, disguise restriction as well. So a very different New York than you guys might be used to. Yeah, New York will be back into the pool of deciders. I don't imagine anybody still picking New York. <laughs> <laughs> Who would ever do that? But uh, yeah, I yeah. I don't imagine anybody's go anybody goes and says I'm really good at picking up the briefcase. You know, I'm gonna pick New York. I counter strat my team uh, opponent. <laughs> the brilliant. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's basically a whole new map now, and I'm curious how how players in general will approach it. There will be, of course, new favorites of the map, new uh, new masters of it, and uh, I guess that was the goal, uh, a whole new, whole new meta to learn. And, um, well, apart from a few very 
lucky spins, which include probably data disks which as high security. probably also means your record for New York is secured for the rest of time. Yeah, I, I was considering that, but I'll leave that to, to other forces to decide if the records, how should the records be kept. Um, but so mine was 215 with a security guard next step and it's you would need just that and and somehow get the three discs with the same disguise so I, I, I do expect that to be impossible and it's probably fair to yeah it's just something like that with an asterisk or a new category but another possibility is that this won't live on forever this uh, restriction and we can we will just return to yeah it. yeah we'll put put like a speedrun.com style uh, you know note saying unobtainable that's old patch yeah exactly that's a, that's a record too but uh, that will be a whole new map with uh, new records and new averages and uh, I think that will be a really interesting uh, project to see where the new New York ends up in comparison to other two target maps because it will be considered as I think a two objective map and uh, I'm not quite sure what's the order between the two target maps I, I would assume it will be above Dubai and perhaps Hokkaido or Paris even and then it will be a Sapienza like uh, situation with those uh, four, five, six minute average runs, uh, but uh, we will have uh, three weeks and a bit to to figure it out. And uh, after all these changes, you guys better pick it so often that we get a decent sample size. And the same goes for Dartmoor, of course. We will see soon enough with um, with the with the Arthur Edwards data restriction. It will be, of course, the case file or the Fitzpatrick tokens. And that will increase the spin length as well. So we won't see uh, Danny Booth as 136 or 138, the fastest ever uh, roulette spin to be beaten in this tournament, that's for sure. Thirty seconds until the second spin, and the way I understood it, I always forget to ask, but Randy was the first player mentioned, and he did pick uh, Santa Fortuna, and I would imagine it's it's A, B, A, B, A, B, which would mean, just looking up the map list once again, that Randy would have picked uh, Santa Fortuna, Vito Tomkik and Chongqing, and uh, Randy would have picked, uh, and PG would have picked New York, Dartmoor and Mumbai, and it sounds about right. Um, Second spin is here, it's Tento IT Worker for Athena and Data Core Janitor for Obtain Data, the target. I guess it's target or objective, <laughs> pick your poison. Yeah, it's a little bit... It depends, I guess, if you want to start Janitor. I don't have to obviously do the whole bit with Perez and Man. So maybe starting janitor and heading straight for the core and then the IT luckily disguise is a downstairs disguise. You just walk over one room and get that disguise. Random seems to be doing that. I suppose this will mean that the two main strategies can emerge. The, the one being the Athena kill followed by going down to the uh, data core and then get the data core, put it in the briefcase and uh, of course traverse that way. I I guess it's not necessary to put it in the briefcase, but I think it, it helps a lot as Randy with a restart and picks up the key cards because he needs to get through that. Uh, uh, it's a bit it's a bit unnecessary because he's walking by the IT room. The uh, There is obviously the IT members carry the high security card, which is Hey, perks of being IT, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that will be learned throughout the tournament. I personally didn't know it either. Either I knew about the uh, the janitor key. I want to. I want. I want to say I know about IT, but then you go watch me play in New York, and I think you can make a case against me that I don't. But yeah, <laughs> the IT is a very powerful disguise. 
are normally allowed up to the second floor, but if you mess with the Wi-Fi, can uh, be allowed on the top floor and inside Athena's office. It's one of the most underrated and powerful in, ter in terms of disguise, uh, trespassing permissions. Uh, it disguises. So there's a little IT lesson from like New York enthusiast who doesn't know how to play New York. <laughs> I don't think either of us know how to play New York uh, with these new <laughs> conditions. But yeah, that's kind of funny because you have the record, so. Yeah, at least in, in this show match, and probably with these two players not practicing a lot, or Randy, of course, historically doesn't, and Pichu also claiming that, we will learn it together. So we can see now the two different approaches, and Randy was considering getting through that door while it was open, but we just want to pacify this high security guard and get his key card that way. Yeah, that's it. Uh... Oh, nice. Tried to close the door, he went inside the box instead. Difficult. And Pidgey will turn off the Wi-Fi. Absolutely. That's a Hitman moment right there. Pidgey has a flash grenade. An interesting approach to handling the guards over here. He's a big fan of that. Hope it works out. Uh, he didn't get the other guard. I think that was his... No. Yeah, his I didn't goal. see the flash icon over his head. That was the enforcer, Dotten. I th I think if it's that just a tiny bit closer <laughs> to the other guard, yeah, now you get what you deserve. <laughs> He's definitely gonna be flash when he wakes up after that. <laughs> this is the vault, forty-seven. I'm really but sorry. he mm, should have a, at least another try before Randy finishes because he doesn't have any either any objectives either. Getting closer to that uh, vault opening. Oh, random doesn't have the the vault switch open. He needs to either take this card or disable and break it open. So how? Looks like he's disabling it again. I think you can cut corners somehow. One of the guards should have the key to the uh, to that lock, which cannot be opened. With yeah, that key. that's the guy with the SMG. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he has the the vault key card or like the red one, the the designated one. That's funny. He came back from here, and as soon as he walked in, he got a question mark again to go back. They just really don't mind. Yeah, gives random the opportunity to break open the little thing that covers the switch. Is the... Okay, I don't, didn't have a random sound, so I wasn't sure if the world was opening. Because... Uh, yeah, also wasn't sure if... Re... Well, he... Is he going to play lasers? Apparently. He is going to try it. Well, oh, <laughs> he gets decided not to do it, but with the guards up, that's an interesting choice to make. They're going to run straight for the vault. I don't know how he's going to escape this. It's gonna hide inside the vault. There are no closets in here, so he has to hide behind one of these objects and just hope that not many guards arrive here, but that's at least two more coming. I guess one might stay outside, but still two guards and it will take an awful long time for this to settle down and they might still find him in here. Yeah, all the while Pidgeot decided to go for the two tranks on two guards and knocks out the third one. Athena went to check for one of them. Oh, and yeah, there goes random. Spot guards finally find him. Yeah, it couldn't have gone forever and with four guards, it was at the end of his run. I think it's the red key card which will be the more powerful way to get in there because you just really want to get rid of the lasers. He, did he not, did he take out his scramblers? I thought he could just use the scrambler to disable the lasers as well. I might be misremembering, but for some reason I believe that you cannot use it on that, which would be strange, but it's, it's really restrictive on the, on the last oh. uh, security opening. I guess it's worth checking for New York player speakers. But yeah, especially with this being in a Objective, no. Yeah. PG did get the first objective down. He has the kill and 
he was worried about picking up a Cena's disc in the wrong disguise. It's not even uh, disqualifiable. Oh offense. no, Pidgey. Don't worry, Mister. Hey, Oof. Getting spotted picking up the wet floor sign by the janitor, and yeah, that's a suspicious action. Yeah. I want to say he was going to use him to knock out. Hey. Yeah, sorry. Hey, yeah, using the the super the wet floor accident. I th I imagine that's what he had in mind. Yeah, because so of course it's illegal or suspicious here. I, I'm just curious if it's if it's not somewhere else, but not a lot of maps with this. So I'll just be me misremembering. But it's a big restart from PG and. Uh, Randy with a minute and a half lead, but curious about his approach. If uh, if he's going to spend time with the lasers, that will see his lead dwindle down a bit. Oh! Apparently. He opens the door, the IT guy sees it. Yeah, I but think he disabled the Wi Fi, which causes them to call downstairs, and that's when they move. I was just going to ask because I really don't see them in there, but that must have been a trigger, and that's the reasonable one. And uh, now we they Is he going for the crank on the janitor. I suppose that is the safest at this point, and I guess the big big takeaway from here is that PG will uh, switch up the order and uh, we get the vault without starting janitor so there's that but he can now approach this room he has the key card and uh, yeah we question if he has anything else different to approach this room with probably the easiest is to yeah go around the long way around oh, man Pidgey with the uh, maxed out suspicion meter once again that's Half crazy by a camera no trespassing spotted. Yeah, it's away with that. And this KO means... Cannot use the TV just yet. But I think the remaining KOs are fine and doable. He has a plenty of tranks. But the question is... How many does he want to use on Athena's guards? And a surprise, none of them use the free chloroform that just knocks literally everybody out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I guess it's more. <laughs> more in your face when you start bank rubber and. Right. Don't have a lot of options, but it would be still in that cabinet, which. It's not. Uh, not really out of the way, but there's PG and with a safer option, we'll be able to. Oh, he will take up something else still, perhaps. Uh, the correct disguise, of course. <laughs> you need the correct disguise to pick out physically right. the data core. Yeah, he has the card, should be able to disable the lasers. He doesn't want to do... Hello? He's also going to play lasers, all right. Yeah, so I, part of this is the show match. Part of this is, of course, players playing New York Vault for the first That's time That's nice, he manages to do it. He doesn't lose his patience like Random did. He just Random did the first stage and decided to just not care anymore. I'm and, curious uh, if he will take the safe approach to way back. But he, he will. And once he's out... I guess one more? Yeah. Now he's out yeah, and nice uh, won't ever uh, alert the guards this way. So he has the safe first objective. And at this point, he can change from and to any other disguise as long as he gets the kill with the IT worker. Speaking of which, the two IT workers are here, changes back into his origin disguise, but finds the other IT guy. And now it's the straightforward New York spin to go four minutes into his run. It'll take some to get used to. <laughs> it's a very, very uh, friendly BM from Pajero to the janitor that caused him to restart last time as he passes him. 
Yeah, it's it's not even to to Randy or or someone in particular, but <laughs> no, NPC absolutely. Get, no, gets we, we Hitman players don't ever BM other players. We we'll only BM the, the the NPCs. Yeah, it's <laughs> they are our enemies, and especially in this one, this might be one v one, but you are really playing the game or absolutely. try to survive. It's it. you play your play the game first, and then the opponent. It's a it's always been the case, and. The way the game is resisting these days, it's it's even more amplified now. Getting more challenging, like patches after patches, but we don't really have one. But it is Pijero with the correct disguise and uh, having all these guards in a bright position, but of course, yeah, with, yeah the cycles are different here. I, uh, excuse me, you left some. It's a. Uh, I I wonder if he's waiting for the hostile area to go away because he turned the because also Athena is talking about his presence being there because the Wi-Fi being turned off. But I think to make this area non-trespassing, you have to disable it from downstairs. That might be very true. I was thinking if you need to check in with the the assistant, but I think you're right. Uh, it would need to be just a different uh, Wi-Fi machination and to give you a peekaboo to get rid of the first one. And as long as the other two are stationary, should be a decent KOK -okay because Athena will be having a longer discussions, but these are two crucial KOs. Target lockdown. Oh, nope, she runs the other way, he has to catch up. The thing 47 is still fast enough. Luckily, yeah. It's unfortunate that PG didn't have a melee item there to, to KO her quicker, but it won't be an issue and shouldn't really be anyone randomly coming in here anymore. Tento for the He's kill. gonna take the pillar guard, okay? Doesn't get spotted with the wall hack. Randy would also get in the kill in a different position. He didn't so have the... So, Pidgey, yeah. what's his plan to get the data core? He left it in the room. Yeah, <laughs> what's, he do? what's his plan about that? He thinks he has the objectives and is just going for the exit, but it's not the case with the data core, and that might cost him New York because Randy has both objectives. And uh, Pidgey going further and further away. I think he just, just realized. realized it just hit him, but random hits the exit. Pidgey arrow, that was the thing you used to distract the first guard. It's six and a half minutes. Random will be faster in game time and quote unquote RTA as well because of that blunder. We've seen that happen. It's just it's New York. It's the new New York because you may use a briefcase there, you may use your agency pickup there, but Unlike previous runs, it may be your exit objective. Yeah, I was just uh, Mr. Mike posted earlier, you must have the core in hand when you exit. You cannot back it up with the data disks. You well, he, need that. He does exit. have it in hand, but unfortunately, a <laughs> random will win New York. Wow. Uh, yeah, 45 passed and 46 passed, but no photo finishes, and it wasn't even that 47 second mark. It, it was a long one, it was a, quite a difference, but <laughs> unfortunate end by PG and Randy Veer tied up. So that's 2 to 2 to 2. Yeah, that's a lot of twos, but yeah, that's nice to see both players taking each other's map if we consider the ABAB -A -B thing that we mentioned. Mm hmm. And judging by the player's uh, style, this does feel like more of a Randy map, which, which yeah, it just confers to me that uh, 1, 3 and 5 will be his choices. So it's back on Randy's terms and uh, Wittoton Creek, what did it change? I'm not sure if anything changed. The Battle Axe might have. I think that's the yes. difference here. Will we have uh, the third pre-RRH show match? with the battle axe, that's the big, biggest question, because I'm fairly sure that both of the previous ones had it. 
yeah it it definitely did and uh the one i i, I admin it, it wasn't rigged it actually showed up which is, i was surprised that was one of the things i didn't rig there was a <laughs> I, I will admit to rigging some stuff especially like the marrakesh with a loud kill and stuff like that it's almost mandatory for show matches so i don't think anyone would blame you for that And did that match? Yeah, that match had a Dubai. So I, <laughs> you you have to you have to try something to make it uh, entertaining for a show match. So I, yeah, I, th I think so. To... And I think it also needs to showcase the new rules, right? That's the whole mm -hmm. point. We're building it up for our, our eight. Yeah, and uh, I think if they see the new conditions that may change, like the public public perception, or or not sure how to to mention it this way. But uh, gets it more approachable for sure. I like how random is reading the intel page for the targets. I've marked your map with several points of interest. It's uh might be what we start playing instead of the briefing videos. What is it to say it's a uh, part of poor doing, man's uh, briefing, Earth. but maybe we can get <laughs> Diana text to speech like a low budget fake ones to, to read out the the intel and that's that's the new norm. Maybe we can have a contest of people saying the briefing in their voice, what Diana says, and we just replace Diana's voice with theirs, whoever wins. Oh. And then we use that for RR. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> refreshing change for the viewers. Would be, <laughs> yeah, after the <laughs> 50th Haven Island, or I'm not sure if, if someone doesn't look forward to a map which is more likely to be a tie or something. I, will, but... I will be happy to be somebody in New York saying, you, uh, we, you. <laughs> Good luck, 47. You can just ask her, yeah. her who, who knows the uh, the whole script of the 700,000 words by heart at this point. But there are so many people in this community with the... Yeah, I, I, I think I know a good amount. From season one all the way to, to of course, uh, all three seasons. And... Well, at least the, the maps that are worth playing, or at least for roulette, I wouldn't really ask anyone for their Romania knowledge. Uh, hey, lots of Romania people don't know that Orson exists in there. Yeah, they just run past it. It's, uh, it's not easy to trigger or not a usual place to stop. Um, oh, we didn't have time to mention the battle axe. I'm curious if we'll see it in three seconds, then we'll for sure mention it, how to get it. No battle axe here, but what is the spin punk? Well, it's fire racks with as the arcane ropes for Nolan Cassidy injected poison as the Sheriff Masterson. Two unique disguises, a live kill and a unique item. So this is a very special spin in some ways, but no battle axe. A very quick caretaking, although I think others could have seen it on, from PG's side. The way to get the battle axe is to uh, open the security door in the Schmidt household, uh, the house for sale. Uh, then you go back to the the main door ring the doorbell three times not five times only thrice is enough and then you will see that uh, the vault door opened and the battle axe is there yeah but to actually get it you need to disable the lasers don't walk in. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a fairly important point yeah hey I, i've seen people run straight in i don't know if that was a joke or not has, has to mention it or you start blaming hit maps. Oh, it didn't tell me to turn off lasers. I died. Fake news. The lawyers will be approaching hitmaps.com for tournament yeah. changing decisions. So as for this spin, uh, JNS Live is usually implies starting with uh, with him and Sheriff Masterson being close to him is, I think, also fair yeah, and assumption absolute clean and beautiful rake takedown of the Seraph Masterson by some random person that was as clean as it gets that's what I wanted to do when I played uh, and I had to do that that was perfectly done so nice to see yeah the rake working it's 
unique item rare to see, but both of them are going for it. And uh, yeah, hopefully that makes uh, makes it more likely for these kind of disguises. This PG almost gets spotted with the whoosh, and that might be an actual smart peekaboo. I don't think he will go quite far. It's a buffer for me, and he misses the rake. Oh. That's, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. The rake doesn't have as much of a range as the snail does. Huh? And random second. with the injected poison kill on Janus. I'll put him ahead now. In the second attempt will do it for PG. I had to do it. It was quite a bit an early call by me. If anyone sees the body, uh, it's a nice freeze for PG, but get us gets us back to one with 41 and still gets spotted. Couldn't get the bullet destruction there. Oh. That's unfortunate. That's, uh, that's... Yeah, definitely. It puts a huge lead for Random as he's going for the second clue. Or it could be a second clue. His first, his first clue, but... Wait, I just realized I didn't put the clue. Wait, no, this map doesn't have that. I, I'm so confused with the new rule set. Does <laughs> Whittleton Creek have rule for? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't, and I appreciate you not showing it. It had it crossed my mind that we will see. Uh, I turned it off because I realized uh, that I had to. So at least I remember it at the right moment. Yeah. It's yeah, really Whittleton good. Creek. It doesn't for the time being. Who knows if it will? <laughs> that will be. Oh, that might become harder to admin than Berlin or Santa Fortuna or something. Yeah, at that point, there are so many conditions, especially if it would be the approach with the five disguises. It's random in <laughs> quite a pickle with Gunther taking down a Janus there, who I think we've seen a match recently, not specifically roulette rivals, but Gunther may stay outside of the room when Janus is uh, killed without him in the room, but Sometimes he, he, he finds the body and drags it all the way down here, as opposed to the carriage, which would be the case for... I don't know, some other kills. I thought he would go to the carriage, but... There's random with the exit, and... Uh, if he gets past this last guard, or just jumps out the window, then... Should have free access to the... Not the party area, because you are trespassing there. I think we'll see it in one second. Yeah, he might get spotted here. There's a long way to go. Oh, yeah, he realizes back straight back into the bush in Janus's yard. That's great awareness, though, because it's the one disguise which isn't allowed in the party area. Don't ask me why, but Random immediately realizing and not tripping his run to it. It's a, it's not a Halloween party, so they're not allowing costumes. <laughs> but of course, Santa 47 uh, is perfectly fine there. Yeah, that's uh, that. Okay, IO logic. Yep. I don't know why I went down that conversation, but Pidgey <laughs> <laughs> he finally has his outfit. The Sheriff Masterson gets caught by the camera of the main door of Janus's house. And with 2.15 to 20 now in his run, he won't be getting him upstairs if the gramophone takes too long. Two KOs and a poke would do it, but now the conversation also ends, so it will be a kitchen isolation. Jank on Gunther won't be seen. My master and the first. Well, unless you turn him around. Oh, and now Janus will scream. The guard upstairs is also somebody you have to keep in mind. Two and a half minutes in. He's... Oh, he also needs to find the prompt. Not getting it. Maybe when he stands up. Perfect. But where will that guard be? It's a big question. He's uh, not none the wiser. He's... Oof. Got away with that one. And again, Pidgey, once again, has his luck turned up to 11 today. Meanwhile, random though, he's almost done. He's picked up the Fire Axe off of James Batty's uh, backyard. Has to disguise, has his axe. Just needs one more clue. The very straightforward approach to this uh, on quick spin, waiting until the garage isolation and getting... Uh, uh, no clues on the way because uh, Ark Society would be the Arkian robes, which means that he's only missing the constant meeting confirmed, which is the cigar box, I believe, and that will be his exit. Yep, takes out the last hurdle, which is James Batty. 
and get a free shovel from his place too. Well, robbery, but Randy with a, I think the first try or the first first try <laughs> of this match. Six and a half minutes. Yeah, Pretty even decent. with this timing, Pijero it would be kind of hard pressed to catch up to Nolan, especially with the party house being trespassing in the party house. Yeah, he would have to go the long way around and basically only tie Randy because he would get the isolation and two clues at the same time and then the run for the battle axe, uh, for the fire axe, maybe get the clue on the way. It's, it's not anything that would make the run much more difficult. So it's Randy's first try, which takes Wickleton Creek. And with that, he has the lead now for the first time this match, halfway through the exhibition match, three after after three of six maps done. And we will take a look at season three for two maps at least. First, it is Dartmoor, and the, the other one target map, which gets the additional objective restriction for the first time before RR8. And um, I guess this is a good time maybe to, to compare the reception because I think lots of people were enthusiastic about New York but kind of given up Dartmoor at the same time when they tried out with the objective. I'm not sure if uh, that becomes more tedious or more fun to play. I guess it depends on the spin of course and if you get that suit by Suit PI combination, which is the most dreaded one in Dartmoor now. Yeah, it's a. Uh... I don't know. I mean, I haven't tried with any of these new conditions, but it. I don't imagine it ever not being tedious. Where both of these. For Dartmoor, it was a bit backwards from New York, where New York people preferred going for the, the three pieces instead of the one whole thing. But on Dartmoor, people preferred the whole thing, which was the case file. So it'll, yeah. be, it, it'll be interesting when the tokens show up as opposed to the case file. And the tokens in a foreign disguise, that means learning the cycles of, of two, two new NPCs. I think Rebecca is very short. It would be the trophy room and the, the main hall. Perhaps the butler is a bit more difficult, but at least he's in areas which are more empty more often than not. It's, it's once again something that cannot be really said well after or or before the first map or before or after the first Dartmoor scene or show and it really needs the tournament, it really needs the three weeks and if testing is the way then, it, then probably the best uh, way to have the final, final decision whether to keep this or not after the tournament. And, can only hope for one spin, but that's not the whole picture, is what I want to say. Right, and again, the whole tournament might not be enough of a picture, because we don't know how many times it's going to get played. Is three times in the whole tournament enough of a sample size, you know? Yeah, it's, it's really hard to say, because I don't think Dartmoor will be all that, all that popular anyway. Well, the best case scenario is... I think the same, 10 picks, 10 RNG picks, and that's that's very generous, I think, from a 100 match tournament to have 20 of them in Dartmoor, but if it's 10 or 15, which is more realistic, then might not even have certain disguise combos, might not even have certain disguises at all, so it really has to be a subjective thing to decide, and yeah, until then... Hope it will be enjoyable, hope today will be enjoyable for these two players and us.
And as for the match goes, uh, six points mean that Randy couldn't lose the match. He could tie it six to six or of course win it. But uh, he would need a win here to get there. And uh, for now the spin is Alexa, sniper rifle photographer and a case file as the mansion guard and it is a tokens, collect tokens is the restriction. It's a little bit confusing because the objective is to obtain the case file, but the actual action is to collect the tokens. Yeah, I wonder what's inside. Would it be obtain data or is it just New York? I mean, I'm fairly sure that Mike went with what's on the map. It's fine. The case yeah, file I, I think that's it, yeah. how it is in the game. It's just adding this in the tournament setting. I can see it confusing at least a handful of players. Excuse me? Yeah, because there's the case file now, the image and the tokens as... Uh, yeah, as itself, the, the condition. But it's always difficult because Mike and Hitpeps in general uh, just strives to be the same as... Uh, as in-game, but I think if the in-game is, <laughs> isn't helping us with find the case file, might be best to change. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's just, uh, it, you cannot make an argument that that's a physical actual file thing, which is it aligns with the thing that's inside the safe. Random try to get uh, the two tokens. He's missed a shot on Rebecca, so he has to KO her in some other way. Doesn't have any extra darts. So at the end of the run, they can be KO'd, and Rebecca is usually KO'd there. But <laughs> that is like the speedrun strategy where you exit after 10 more seconds. He can hide her there, which would be a nice backup after oof, getting the first token, but uh, gets the crime spotted for from the maid, I believe. I think that's the wall hack spot uh, yeah. next to the door. Uh, it's actually something, uh, at least when I played suit only here, exploit her wall hackiness so she loses enforcer as soon as she sees a strength. Exactly. It's very handy. And uh, Randy also uses the enforcer status removal for the first token. So now he can try again with the second comer. PG will get the kill now after soft lockdown, gun flash. Yeah, very, f very fast this time, random with the approach to Rebecca. So he has the other objective down as opposed to Pajero who has the kill done. Ooh, but he will get spotted trespassing into combat. Oh, that was so close, but it, this time the 101% does not favor Pajero. And Randy with a minute lead and the first objective down and then it's photographer and somehow get Alexa, who I cannot tell where she is. I think Randy went general generic start and not for fast forward so she would be yeah upstairs. he started as the security guard so should be standard stuff pg with a different approach getting the mansion guard very early on and there's the wall hack on them by the maid she loses their enforcer status in real time you can see that Nice, and that's quick, and I think it will be a seeker for Alexa, obviously, but then perhaps uh, perhaps isolate her and then get the disguise. I'm not sure how quick the 60 seconds are in this suspect. Because he's going for the second token. Okay, she actually went to the, the good bathroom. Where the guard will go inside of the bathroom. I mean, it's, I guess, a good cannabis subjective. This bathroom also has a door that's like right next to the kitchen. But I would say, without a dart, this is more favorable because you can knock him out easily. Otherwise, he would stand outside the other bathroom. Yeah, the other approach would be a gun flash into KO from behind, but I think the coin is perfectly fine here. And, uh,. Yeah, case file done for both. Pichero behind by a minute, but seems that she uh, seems that he is closer to finishing because Alexa is down and photographer isolation is not that difficult. 
should do some detecting yourself. Yeah, R random doesn't have uh, Alexa in any good positioning. He has a disguise and the kill item. Now this uh, mention oh, stuff is a bit more awkward. Yeah, both are hitting difficulties here. Pidgeot cancelling the isolation because he's worried about that mansion stuff and we want to hide the photographer instead. Wow. Jenkon, the butler, has only been found now after two and a half minutes. That's important to note. It's interesting. Yeah. That's definitely not consistent because he can get found earlier almost as soon as he gets tranked by uh, Edward. Yeah, or I thought the dimension staffs would do that, one of the two. Yeah, that's... But he has he has a disguise and his kills are always uh, already set up. Just needs to find a way to safely go inside without getting spotted. Oh. Now, this is difficult for him because he will start trespassing here but will wait for that guard very nicely, kept his composure and should have everything here and there's a sniper and uh, well, I guess security disguise is just as good as long as the sniper is dropped and Randy just cannot yeah. find that kill on Alexa. It's looking good for Pajero, should be able to pull it back now. Even out the score once again. So we head into Chongqing, another Hitman 3 map. There's the finish, and indeed, it's all square or squared up <laughs> after four maps. Nice 4 to 4, potential for the tie, potential for someone to take these last two maps. There are no deciders, no, no non time limit action. It would be in the tournament because that has been reverted to a no time limit decider if it gets to that. It would be a, at 2 2 or 5 5, I guess. But we are just two maps away here, and uh, yeah, Chongqing next. And I think. I think I should have opened the page, but uh, out of memory, I would say that uh, Imaging Jamming has been added and uh, Imaging Consume has been removed. That would be the two changes for this map. Correct. Drowning for Imaging Royce is now allowed for all disguises. Consumed Poison for Imaging Royce is now banned for all disguises. So those are the change. Other than Whittleton Creek, that's really i think the only relevant change that we have for the new for rr8 section yeah because we've seen the two maps with the objective changes and now we've seen the condition changes even if it didn't come to that in Vitalton, but we've seen enough but like so that's all fine there so there is the possibility for that image in drowning but we won't be seeing the consumed on her in just three and a half minutes. Ran out of things to talk. I will check now the hard stats of these yeah. two players. Sorry, I was I was also too busy looking, making sure the admin page is working properly. It's yeah, it's your priority, obviously. I <laughs> don't didn't mean uh, that way. No, that's all right. Uh, yeah, I was I forgot about the stats too. Let's see. Fifty fifty. The funny part is that uh, Randy has one one win from two maps. In Chongqing, and uh, PG has four wins from eight appearances. So of course that was that won't change on the page today, but uh, one will be ahead and above 
after that in theory. So out of the eight times, it looks like Pidgey has picked it only twice. Honestly, missing it, but I believe you. Oh, I wonder some random person's page. That that would explain it. Yeah, some random person has not picked it because I guess I imagine it's his either his opponent's, which you can find here. It's gonna be really hard to just do it by eyes just now. <laughs> it would be a random pick against Supreme Commander Ike and his previous match. Oh, that's nice history. Some random person's previous match was the RR7LB round four match where PJ Rodriguez. Against PJ Rodriguez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a uh, New York and Mumbai and Chongqing, which are the three picks of PJ, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, New York, yes. Mumbai, yes. And I. I, I think Ching, it, maybe not, but it's kind of interesting. Those three maps of what random, uh, ran, random won against him. Well, you know, Pijero winning. I'm also looking at the wrong page. Nice. <laughs> it's, uh, it's back to roulette season, RR season. Need to uh, get familiar with RR stats again. It's a very useful tool. Yeah. So, so th those are the maps that Pidgey won, and we have those three maps. That's the point I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Uh, yeah. It's uh, kind of interesting. Familiar we'll, for we'll sure. Pidgey, Pidgey didn't win New York, but time to change. Time to keep up the Chongqing or and the Mumbai results. He still can win both of those. Right. Of course, these being third picks, it's it might not just be the one that are they are most familiar with, but a decently long and a very long map to come. So curious to see about the finish of this. What have we got for map number five? Uh, we have Screwdriver as a facility guard for Hush and Electrocution as the researcher for Imogen Royce. That is perfectly... It's kind of a back and forth disguise with uh, sort of a tricky kill on Imogen. Could be tricky if you want to pull her outside because I don't know which puddles work and which don't. <laughs> and some of them only work when they're alive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because the one it. where she pukes over the railing, that that one is a live one, right? Because somebody. Tr yes, I would say so. And even then, you might be. She she might not hit hit it. Yeah. I th I think there is something else to look out for, but that would be one approach. The other would be to do five drones and place an EMP at the top of the staircase because that is a another puddle which will be. Mm, triggered by her, or he will, she will be the one seeing that. And uh, I guess celebrating the addition of drowning, you could get her in, uh, in the the facility in one of the bathrooms. I think. Right. Yeah. That that's probably would be the safer thing to do, and also don't really need to use drones for that one. But the players are so comfortable with the drones now, so I'm curious if that will change at all. And for now, both starting as the tech though, the mm -hmm. analyst, I call him tech, but... Yeah, everyone's a tech in this world of assassination. Let's <laughs> see, yeah. And it's a... different looking... Uh, oof. It's a different adventure for both of them, Randy with a Seeker and Pidgey with Bullet Distraction, which turn into a Green Gun Crime Notice, which at this point I've run out of words to describe it. And yeah, that's the Seeker for Imogen. I just love to know about it's nicely done so far from random here. Guard does no animation, just walking straight to the bathroom. <laughs> it tricked me a couple of days ago, but... Yeah, that is all fine, and I think uh, he's just waiting for Imogen to be in position, and uh, well, preferably the card as well, because I never really checked if Vincent would be checking on Imogen. I would imagine that he does. I think that's best to be safe about it. But there really aren't any 
places to hide these bodies except, I guess, the two stores. <laughs> it's a side KO on the... The facility guard and keeps green guns. He's knocking out everybody here. Oh, it's a massive... That's question mark on like 18 people. He doesn't have anything to drop. Oh, yeah. And this will turn red for him. Or it, he was red, of course, already, but... Yeah, that's something he cannot turn back to green, so has to restart. And, and I was wrong. Random is going to take care of the guard. Because there is that place to hide that guard, and he did check on Imogen, and so Randy did very well too. Uh, so hide in the, the first stall and wait until the guard is past the first one, but didn't enter the second one where Imogen was already KO'd. It's all very confusing, but he got the job done, and now everyone is KO'd in there, and uh, the Imogen kill is set up. Hey, how are you? Yeah, and he's heading out on his hush, hush kill disguise. Gonna go up there and grab the researcher who's this basically an actual free disguise and a, sort of a free NPC that's in Hush's what's it called? Isolation deprivation chamber, something like that. Deprivation chamber, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rent is phasing through some geometry. Yeah, sorry, you gotta restart. No out of bounds a lot. Yeah, I'm not even sure what he's up to at this point. <laughs> Even if you come back. <laughs> that is just funny, I... I think he's just showing it, because it is a show match, so it's a... Yeah, it... Random. <laughs> oh, well, it can be whatever, it's just really funny either way. Yeah, it's, it's... What happens if that's one time just vaults the player over the railing of the stairs and they just drop straight down? I think it would be amazing to see, and uh, I wouldn't even say it would be disallowed because the particle boosting part is explicitly said, the out of bounds not so much, so that would be my... So if you mean it from the admin perspective, it might be ruled after some consideration that it's something like the, uh, the Dartmoor drop or the Sapienza cliff. I guess we'll see it yeah, when we get that there. Sounds, that, yeah up to admin discretion and potentially admin discussion as well as it's happening <laughs> yeah Ad admin discussion Pidge discretion confusion yeah P yeah pigero very interesting approach he started with a banana peel on one of the facility guards and he's knocked out like eight people in that area uh, imogen is set up with a water tank yeah, the water cooler, uh, I guess, halfway between the tier 2 security and uh, the low analyst room. Yeah, very interesting approach. Random got the kill, he's picked up the facility researcher. No, not the facility researcher, the harshest facility researcher. Yes, <laughs> everything is a facility if, if you want it hard enough. Yeah, everything is facility, everyone is a tech. You... <laughs> Yeah, that, that makes for a perfect cast next time around. You just go to Miami and 30 disguises. Yeah, sorry, I, I, d I, just, I was a little confused there. Oh, it's so good. It's, uh, uh, it's lots of but, setup uh, happening at the moment, so... Yeah, he's, he's, he's got the electrocution kill. He has that room empty, but Hush, unfortunately, is on that chair with that and, test subject. And this uh, break allowed him to shoot the evidence with a loud pistol which caused panic on level 3 and perhaps level 4, but not the top floor, so it's all good for Randy, and back to green guns is always nice. Considering his options, which items to pick up, there are no screwdrivers right here. There would be one next to the Lotus Passage, and I think there will be more heat map section, no 47 phasing. EG has an unfortunate timing cycle on the researcher. I think he tried to distract the block card and didn't work out the way he wanted to. I think so too, yeah. But both of them are late for the peekaboo as well. But get the researcher, get the emotion kill and... Uh... 
Now it would be perfect for Pijera to get Hush on the stairs. He might be a bit late though, it's a big decision for him. He will want to use the distraction, it's seen a bit by the assistant. And there comes Hush, you can see it on the minimap. This will be really close. And I think oh, it will wow. turn Mogwai orange. Yeah, so close though. That's a valiant effort, but unfortunately, Hush approaching towards him with all those eyes. Random's patience will pay off as uh, Hush walks into an empty room. Very methodical approach, getting rid of everyone there. And uh, that's the reward for him, the second kill and most likely the Chongqing yeah. map win. It's kind of what Pidgey did downstairs, but this one obviously is more effective because Hush walking into an empty room is, as you have your disguises ready, Random just needs to not get spotted. Once again gets inside a body hiding spot. Or 47 hiding spot as he tries to close the door behind him. <laughs> but other than that, even if it's just a couple of seconds slower than a motorcycle exit or oh, uh, or um, rooftop exit, but we are not quite there yet because there is one more forcer to get rid of and really doesn't want to turn away. Yeah, that's good. They're going to turn towards him first, because they see the... It looks like he's calling that in, so he should be able to run past him once he investigates. Yes. Oh. That's no window. Not a window he can hop out of. <laughs> that's, a, that's a random moment there, but he'll be able yeah. to get out of there. Yeah, and now it's going to be over, because he will be out on the street and there's no civilians causing any issues. So it's a 9 minute run, or close to that, I wonder which... Yeah, he's surely goes, going to go for the motorbike now, and uh, well, is it going to be 8 or 9 minutes? Uh, yeah, 9 almost. flat. Uh, ran random goes into the final map of the show match with a 6-4 lead. So he cannot lose this match. I mean, if you consider winning or losing for this match in terms of winning maps. Yeah, I, I'm really curious if it's on some anyone's mind here or. I yeah, I mean, it really shouldn't be. Yeah, that's the main main keyword. It it shouldn't. I mean, probably Randy is not. Not a. Not a big competitor in a sense that he he really likes the the casual um, casual competition. Like of course the show matches and these these uh, initiatives. So uh, he's of course always happy to to enter these. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be either. Well, sadly, it's three options still on the table, including the Mumbai tie because that's the last map. But let's say it's not the case. And then we can see a 6-6 six, six tie or an 8-win win. 8-4 eight, win, sorry. Pidgey's performance uh, in Chongqing, I mean the game performance, uh, wasn't up to the task, so he will relaunch the game and uh, of course he will be back in time in uh, just over four minutes, the final map of this match. And Mumbai feels like a very fair way to to end the match, although I'm seeing Rand is 25%. Uh, I would still consider him experienced here because he has played Mumbai for a long time from RR3. Uh, oh my God, what, that was the summer of 2020, all the way yeah, to his previous yeah. match in RR7. Four maps played. Uh, 
Uh, C lost season one win, and that win would be against. He has a strong Kenny. record, though, right? I just lost it. Yeah, sixty-two and a half, five wins over eight plays. He's doesn't look like he's ever picked it. No, he picked it twice. And that Mumbai has a lot of, well, not a lot of tie, but but so many stories. Uh, I guess he had three consecutive match for PJ with Mumbai. It was the his last match of RR6 uh, against Fusk. That was a double Mumbai. And uh, following that, his first two matches should be the first two matches. I'm not sure if the World Championship matches are ordered correctly, but against Soviet Dubov and Conor B, he both. Tied. A, he two both, losses followed by two ties. Yep, he got the RNG Mumbai and tied there. Although it's 30 minute timer, so keep that in mind. But And since that, he got three wins in RR7, starting against me, which was the opening spin of the tournament. And uh, then two more in the loser's bracket against Mario and Jandy. So, yeah, he has a win over random, as we were mentioning earlier. Uh, that was one of the three maps, so he's not able to get that Chongqing win against Random that he did in RR7. We'll see if he manages to keep the Mumbai. Like, Mumbai could favor Random, you were mentioning earlier, because he... It's, it's kind of a map that you can take it one target at a time, especially with the Maelstrom, you kind of have to... Most people like dealing with him if it's not a live kill right away. With the skywalk that's interesting by pg um okay not the not the hunted part but he went through <laughs> the trespassing area of the the private pool and uh, that got a exclamation mark from the queen's bodyguard which was eventually turned off uh, by i guess leaving that area quick enough or the guard not ac acknowledging 47 in that place so Pidgey does like the off-meta, uh, starting photo shoot is also a possibility. I don't really think that uh, he will try Skywalk, and I'm not quite sure about Randy, but he's with an almost default loadout at the main street, so I think any, nothing is off the table for him. Uh, one more refresh for these players and hopefully we won't be ahead or behind too much and we get back to a Pichero getting spotted with the Seeker, but I don't think that's uh, very indicative of, of his performance. He's really um, experienced there, he knows quite a few strategies, so just interested if this spin, this last spin favors him at all. We've got Vazir Kale, aka the Maelstrom SMG as Queen's Guard, Vanya Shah, Old Axis Metal Worker, and Tao Zheng and Falling Objects is Bollywood Crew. Yeah, I wasn't so lucky with the refresh, got an add on random, but looks like a very easy kill for the Maelstrom, because the disguise is one of the ones you can walk around the corner and get it. It's the it's Mike's disguise, not to be confused with Mr. Mike. <laughs> the Mike that's uh, held hostage in Tao Rangan's tower. I think he's called Mike. I might be misremembering. Mike, Mike should be correct. That's what I remember as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a great, great. Uh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say it's a two and a half kill spin, but I meant the David kill with the falling object. You need no setup. Okay. Just oh, yeah, I was going to say two and a half minute Mumbai. So. Two, two and a half kill. Yeah. So it's not quite a kill method for David. You just have to get there in disguise. Right, yeah. But the Vazir condition is quite easy as well, so in general it should be f very, fairly quick. Yeah, it's it's a very, it's definitely one of the quicker Mumbai's, and the usually you would probably want to use the snail because it has become so potent for Dawood, but this is one kill method that you don't need the snail for at all. I'm not sure if they did decide on i think they did decide on the no trank uh, no snail rule so <laughs> there are workarounds with that either way but for this skill it's not even needed so it's uh, it's fairly good for them 
Yeah, random looks like he's gonna turn a couple of corners, gets Queen's guard, and should be able to get this Maelstrom kill. Pidgey not too far behind, though. That holy man is almost out in the street, but he gets the KO and gets the brick. Uh, I think that was a concern there for a second, that the holy man would fall on that brick. Yeah, I was gonna just mention that he, that might just be so that he can save the brick. He's, he's done that, his head hits the brick and it breaks. Yeah, it's just so annoying when and, it happens. Yeah, random gets the kill on the maelstrom, so he has that taken care of, looking to work on a metal worker disguise. So the old axe is also by some metal workers. I think I'm mixing up with the big stuff, but yeah, yeah, I know now. Yeah, the metalworking area has that old axe because the big stuff, there are so many of them around, but the old axe is in the Yes, yeah, I'm kind of curious he's picked that one up because I feel like getting the, using that guard disguise to go grab it and have it placed somewhere in the train yard and then, you know, metal workers are right across the, the yard where the two metal workers are usually where you use the brick on. So we'll be curious to see where random opts to what he opts to do to get the old axe. I believe it's a unique item. Yeah, that's what Pidgey is doing. Using the guard disguise to grab the old axe. Yeah, unique or not, I I fairly sure that would be the main one for, for roulette. I, I Oh no, it's not unique, actually. Uh as you see, Random just shot the ladder. There's one up there right at the feet of Neha, basically where she and Maelstrom takes a drink. Nice. So even with the old X, we might see two different approaches. As you see, the brick drop from Random, and that will cause some question marks. I... Rand is already in the correct disguise, but probably just wants to get rid of these two as well for... I'm not sure this guy Yeah, interesting. Interesting choice because he has to take care of the two guards unless he I mean he can't really if you keep them here You can't really let them pass through this area Yeah, yes, yeah, it's definitely seems more standard stuff from Pidgey because what I say happens It's Pidgey screen about a couple of seconds later <laughs> so There's indeed. the two guards And time is precious that random will do yeah. too Ooh. <laughs> that really knockout. close. When Randy gets away with it, I did think it would be really close for these isolations, but uh, he gets it done and uh, will be the first one to approach Vanya. And uh, he has the metal work. Uh, he has the Oldex not too far away, but PG has already transported it here. Will be really close, especially with the Davut kill being trivial. Yeah, only hard part, uh, annoying or tedious, whatever you want to call it, is to go to the tower and get a crew disguise. You can call them tech too. <laughs> yeah, actually. And Randy leaves these NPCs really late and luckily for him, the metal workers were already taken care of. That might have been part of his concern that they might still be oh, around. Oh, oh. He has, uh, yeah, looks like Neha's not here, and there's the old axe. So sometimes if she's right up here smoking, you're kind of locked. Yeah, and she's a run ender, the run reaper, I guess. This is going to be very close. Both players' in game time is very similar, and their positioning in terms of kills are, are as well. And I just try to remember who was the first one to to use the bricks. It it might have been. I think it wasn't Peter. He had the option when he got the old eggs, but I don't think he used the bricks there. He waited until the metal worker area. But yeah, I, 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 I think so. Yeah, but so random in terms of yeah. So Dowd is already downstairs. Definitely ahead for random. Peter trying to figure out a way to get in without going around. And without using crowbar to open these, he wants at least a trank or maybe even both on these guards so that they look away but doesn't see the body oh. there. 
Now he does, but and also others an are MP looking. A civilian also looked towards it and he's heading towards that area. Oh, he's got a lockpick. I think with the lockpick, it's right. way too much safer. So, yeah, good for him. He's inside, but Ren is wow. also inside in a different area. He can, he can really easily uh, get these two kids. Shoots only one bullet to shoot the camera. <laughs> she is not panicked. It might just be the worst or, or the worst approach. The the unlucky are you really wanted to get the two bullets there. But Randy gets the disguise. PG uses a chank on that disguise. They might be changing disguise at the same time. Randy will be dragging the body to Randy the playing container. It safe now. Yeah, the girl will be checking on. It's and so depending on where Dowd is, it yeah, it looks like Pajero will be behind enough so he doesn't have to wait. Body will get found, but it's strength, so it shouldn't be a problem. And this is incredible. It's so hard to call. This this is this would have been photo finish, uh, given they both finish this, that forty seven seconds. I guess the looks one like last thing. Almost there. Yeah, the one last thing to yeah, separate but... them is if they can get the angle or somehow turn red there. And Randy turns red with Vanya. Oh my. That's... Who? I, I think she was too far out in the open and the civilians or one civilian from the hill who doesn't have access will, will go through there. I'm not exactly sure, but PG isn't going for the quick... Uh, <laughs> Snipe there, he's going for the full isolation. You can get the, the drop there without non targets, but PG is not sure about that either. PG's, yeah, PG is kind of contemplating the. Oh, he gets the shot though. Dawood is down, still green guns. And that should yeah, be looks the end like of it. That, yeah, exactly. That uh, was the big given part where they both had to finish, but you know, random on a restart gets spotted by the holy man. Unless the KO is hurt by him. And Randy, so, uh, oof. yeah, after six maps, both of them taking the equal amount of map wins will come away with a 6-6. Six, six. And, and crucially, I think Randy was the first one to shoot the boat and would have been the first one to exit, but there was Vanya. And of course, after you see Vanya and, you, and know your run is over, maybe Randy was uh, just shooting it for the heck of it. If the body wasn't found, who knows if he would have shot the boat quicker. And I guess we will never know if this score would have changed. But we get a 6-6 six, six, a tie to end this. And they both get to keep the slow throw, which was the, <laughs> the joke prize of this. Oh, some really tense Mumbai here to finish it off. It was it really made me feel like a tournament match or a tournament decider. Yeah, definitely. That was a good map to end uh, the series on, and didn't prove us anything who the better sloth was. Not that <laughs> we're trying to figure that out, but <laughs> yeah, there was an option, but it. Uh... When we decided here, they may meet yet again for... I guess I can now check if... can't remember, but I feel like the other match, show match we cast, it had a tie scores as well, maybe... Yeah, it was. So... Uh, <laughs> Chris Vidakar yeah. was also 6-6, six, six, so... I guess if you don't want to win or lose, just uh, call us and just we call a cast. tie. Yeah, exactly. But... Um, yeah, they, they hit... We'll have to play each other in RR8 to to settle it with a win or loss because we can award ties and it's not the world championship. So um, they can meet for the second time. The two slots only played once, as we mentioned. It was uh, Randy's last match in RR7. Both are in the PC bracket, so there is the chance if they want to meet in the first round or, or even further because we are talking about uh, Randy RR1 veteran. I think he has a third place from there and many top tens. Uh, and PG has quite a few uh, top five finishes from uh, 
from from the biggest RR. So he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And uh, I'm just curious to see how the sloths will fare starting this Friday. But uh, I think that should be it from us. Uh, Punky, any any last words from the match? Any takeaways? Not much takeaway since it's uh, it was a tie. But I think. I don't think we would see the players play much differently, especially not random. Pidgeotto might be a little more... I don't want to use the word try hard, but <laughs> he will concentrate a lot more, I imagine, for the actual tournament matches. Yeah, and, and that's... Very exciting. And that's not to say they weren't played good, but it's, it's, it is a uh, different... Oh, yeah. Obviously, I know what you mean, it, but for others as well... It, the show match mentality right. was very high level here and the tournament mentality will be also showcased a couple of days. Yeah, the pressure is something you can't replicate no matter how many hours you practice when you play in a tournament with admins and casters and other people watching you. Yeah, although if, <laughs> if any players can somehow slowly get used to the pressure, it might be these two Randy's... I, I guess I can tell it will be Randy's 41st match in the first round and PG is actually uh, has one more match played so it is 41 matches played for PG 44 random they have so much experience and can't wait to see more of them from RR8 but that would be it from us from this match and uh, thank you all for watching and GG's to the players thank you GK Punk for joining me for the co-cast and editing this match Hey, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Hope yeah. uh, it went well from my pers my end. Yeah, it, it looked all good. It was a great pleasure to play this one. RR8, I will type it up here. The registration ends in one day and one hour and just a few minutes. Uh, the tournament begins on Friday the 6th and will run through three weeks and three days until the 29th. Uh, PC and console bracket are both up for grabs with prizes and the role, and of course the fame of being uh, the current best roulette player. So it will be a lot of fun and hope you guys uh, to see, uh, hope to see you guys for more matches starting this weekend. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.